In today's video, I'm going to talk about retrieval augmented generation, and then I'll demonstrate how it works using some AWS services. Retrieval augmented generation, or in short, RAG, is a process of enhancing the output of a large language model by using knowledge from external data sources. Now, these data sources contain data that is different than what the large language model was trained on. So using RAG is a way of improving the large language model output so that it remains relevant, accurate, and useful in various contexts. So for instance, if you have your own organizational data and you want to use that in conjunction with LLMs, using RAG would be a perfect use case for that. Large language models are very useful, but they do have some limitations. One of which is that the data that's used to train them does not change and is from a specific point in time. So if you want to request some information from the large language model, but it's from after that point in time from which the training data was obtained, the output would either be inaccurate or no output would be produced. Another limitation is that large language models are not context specific. So if you wanted to have a large language model that's specific to your organizational knowledge, you would have to train or retrain the large language model. And this is quite expensive, both financially and computationally. To work around these limitations, this is where RAG comes in. So without RAG, the large language model just takes the user input and creates a response based on the information it already has, which essentially is the data that was trained on. But with RAG, we introduce another step. So that step is that we retrieve relevant information from the external source, and then we pass that information together with the original query uh, back to the large language model for it to process it and generate a response. This diagram illustrates this concept. So here in the first step, there's some type of prompt and query. And the, when the query is entered, it is sent to an external knowledge source. So this could be your business data in a database. It could be an external API. But the idea here is that it's some data that is missing from this large language model. So once the relevant information is retrieved, then it is appended to the initial request here. So we have a prompt query and then the additional context, which we retrieve from our external data source. And then we use that as input into the large language model and the large language model uses that to generate a text response. Next, I'm going to demonstrate how all this works using some AWS services. I'm going to start with Amazon Bedrock, which is a fully managed service that offers a selection of high performing foundation models to build generative AI applications. So I'll click on get started. And the first thing I want to do is request access for a model. So when I click on that, we see all these base models here, and I already have one that I requested access for. So I'm going to be using this Llama 3. And the way I did this was I clicked on manage model access, and then you select the one you want, then you click save changes. You will be granted access um, usually takes a short period of time. Mine didn't take long, so you should be able to get access. Then from there, you'll be able to now use this model as your LLM. Okay, so I'm going to uh, now just test this uh, model that I selected. So I'll come to the chat here, select model. Already have this here, so I'll go to this, apply. And now I can ask you some questions. So let me see, let me ask it. When is my electric bill due? And you see, it doesn't have context about my electric bill. And you'll see why this is relevant uh, later in the demo. But let me ask you the more general question. Which country won the FIFA World Cup in 2022? And you see it has this information because this is data that was trained on. Since I'm going to be implementing my RAG demo using Amazon Bedrock APIs, as well as Amazon Kendra APIs, I'm going to need the API information for my request. So let me clean this up first of all. And if I come in this context menu here, we can see there's this option for view API request, but it's grayed out. And that's because there's nothing in the prompt. If I paste this in here, I come back, I can view it. And I'm going to copy this because I'm going to need it later on. So I'll copy this and then I'll paste it somewhere, perhaps in uh, text edit or like some type of notepad. I'm now going to configure my Amazon Kendra and I already have an index here, but the first thing you want to do if you don't have any indexes here is to create one. And that index basically just holds the contents of your documents and makes them searchable. So I already have one here, but I'll show you the process. Just create the index, enter the name, uh, description, I am role. I chose create a new role because I didn't have any. Uh, so for now, I'll just use an existing just for the demo, but you should use this, create a new role. And I'll go to next, left the defaults, 
next left developer edition because it's just for the demo next review and create and then i created it so i'm not going to create this because i already have one once the index is created now you can add a data source for this demo i'm using s3 so that's where my documents are going to be and simply come here and say add data sources i already have one so i'm not going to add one but i added s3 so it's come to s3 here add connector same thing just type a name i add a description next uh, again, create a new role, already have one, so I'll use this. I selected no VPC. Uh, sync scope. So this is where I selected my S3 bucket. Uh, everything that's optional, I left blank. And sync mode, I said new, modified, or deleted uh, content sync, but you know you can choose whatever you want. I ch just chose this for the demo. And then for frequency of the syncing, so syncing just means when the documents are pulled from S3 and are stored into Amazon Canvas, so they're searchable. So I selected mine to be run on demand so that I can just do it whenever I want. Um, just for the demo, uh, for your use case will vary depending on how, you, how frequently you want the sync to be done or how you want the sync to be done in general. And then click next. Oh, I forgot something here, yeah, location. I'll just go with this, choose next. Here I just left the defaults. Next, review and create. But I'm not going to select our data source, I already have one. So if I come back to my data source, here's mine. And I already have a document inside there. And this document is my electric bill. And that's what I'm going to be searching using um rag or that's what i'm going to be trying to get information about using my rag demo so if i was to add another document in my s3 bucket i'd have to come here and click sync now that's how i, I chose my settings because i'm going to be doing it on demand so this is what i click to pull that new document into amazon Kendra so that it's searchable if i want to test that indeed my documents from s3 were stored correctly in Kendra and that they are searchable I'll just come to this search index content and I'll use the same question from before, which is when is my electric bill due? And voila, we see that my documents were indeed stored correctly in Kendra. And we can see that the answer is here in bold. This is when my bill is next due. All right, so now let me put all of this together. So I'm going to do that using Lambda. I already have a function there declared and it's named rag. And I'm going to walk through this code to demonstrate how the retrieval augmented generation happens using Kendra APIs as well as Bedrock APIs. Before I do that, let me show the permissions that I needed to grant to this Lambda function in order for you to be able to query Kendra and also invoke the Llama 3 model in Bedrock. Here I have the role name, so I'll click on that and it'll take us to IAM. And here we see three policies. The first one just gives us access to uh, CloudWatch. So the Lambda is able to perform some actions in CloudWatch. Then the second one, invoke bedrock model policy. That does what the name depicts. So it allows us to invoke the model. And I had to specify the specific model here. So it's the model ID for my Llama 3. And the final one, allows us to actually query my index. So this is an index ID that I had to provide here so that this Lambda only has permission to query that index. So let's go over this Lambda handler function. The first thing I do is I grab the Kendra client and then I have two variables here, one that stores a Kendra query and then the other one that stores the index ID. So this is the ID of the index that I created earlier in Amazon Kendra. And I've stored that in an environment variable in the Lambda. After that, I perform a query on Kendra using these two variables. And so this part of the Lambda function corresponds to the search query portion here. So when I'm searching for this relevant information, I'm doing that on my external sources, in this case, S3 uh, via Kendra. 
So that corresponds to this. Then I get back the result and I iterate over the items, I only have one result that came back. And so I take that result and I print it out in the console here and I'll show that on a demo. After that, I take the response that I got from Kendra, which is in the form of an excerpt, and then the initial Kendra query, and I pass that into this query bedrock method which is going to now take that query and the excerpt and generate an input and then use that to invoke my Llama 3 model in Bedrock. So again here, I grab the Bedrock Runtime client and then I build the prompt. All right, so if we look in this build prompt function, we see that it has a variable name raw prompt that just takes the initial Kendra query and the context that we got from Kendra and formulates a new input here. And then it returns this, which is what we're going to use to query our Llama 3 model. Now this format I got from the Llama 3 documentation. And if I just look for Llama 3 prompt, and you could come here and we'll be able to see the special token that I used with Llama 3, as well as some examples here. So this is how I was able to figure out the format that Llama 3 wants. All right, now that I got the prompt from this build prompt function, I'm ready to now invoke my Llama 3 model using the Bedrock Runtime. So I'll take that prompt and pass it into this build request body function. And if I scroll down, I see that this is what the request body looks like. So it takes in the prompt that I generated. And then there's this, there's these uh, three parameters here, max, gen, length, temperature, and top P, which I obtained. I just use the defaults from here. So I can view API request, and you can see these are the parameters that it comes with. You can modify this as you want, but for the demo, I'm just going to use these defaults. So 512, 0 0.5, 0 0.9 is what I use here. So that builds a request body. And then also have the model ID that I need to pass in. And that is also here, so model ID. And then from there, I get a response when I invoke the model. And that response comes back as a JSON but then I convert it into a Python uh, map or dictionary rather. Then I print that out. I'll print out the text that was generated by Bedrock. So let me run this function and see what it prints out. So here we see that the Kendra response comes as an excerpt and it has a subset of the information that we want, but it has the most pertinent information, which is the amount due and the date. And then we take this excerpt from Kendra and the original query, which is when is my electric bill due? And then we pass that into Bedrock and we can see now Bedrock returns this response. Your electric bill is due on May 22nd, 2024. So I want to generate a different response. In addition to knowing when my bill is due, I want to know how much I owe. So I'll just add that here and how much is it? And I'll deploy that run the function again. And looking at the bedrock response, you see that it has the due date as well as the amount that I owe. And what's interesting here is that this is where you see the power of Kendra and bedrock together because in the Kendra except that I get back from S3, it talks about the amount due. So it doesn't have a concept of how much is it. But when I pass this Kendra excerpt into Bedrock, Bedrock is able to deduce the fact that I'm asking about an amount when I ask how much is it. And then it's able to string together this response here with the amount due. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching. I hope it helps to give you a better understanding of how retrieval augmented generation works and how you can implement it using AWS services.